I'm talking with Lee Leachman again today for No Better Bull, and we're talking today about the milk EPD and milk production in cows. And I wonder if you just start out with just kind of the basics of what the, the milk EPD is, what it means. Well, unlike the uh, dairy farms where they actually milk the cows to measure their milk EPD, in beef cattle, the milk EPD is based on the weight of the calves they wean. And of course, we know what the expected growth of the cow is. And the only two things that she puts into the calf are her growth genes and then her milk production. And so the EPD basically is based on what that weaning weight performance is on a cow's calves. So I, I suppose there might be some assumption that, that more milk is better because you want, uh, want a heavy calf. That's, uh, that's uh, your pay weight there, but there probably are some trade-offs. Definitely. You know, obviously higher milk cows would be expected to wean heavier calves for each pound of milk EPD goes up. You'd expect a pound heavier calf. Of course, the downside to that is those higher milking cows have higher nutritional requirements and higher intake. You know, they have to eat more to milk as much. And so the question becomes, where is the trade-off between milk and fertility? So I guess that depends then uh, on, on the environment, among other, uh, among other goals for an individual ranch. Absolutely. You know, I mean, obviously the, if you were feeding your cows corn all year round, you wouldn't have to worry about it. You could put as much milk in your cows as you wanted, but most of us are grass-based in our cow operations, and especially with feed prices as high as they are today, suddenly uh, more and more ranchers are starting to say, can I cut back on supplemental feeding and still have my cow herd perform at that kind of optimal 90-some percent pregnancy rates? And what we find is that the higher milking cows end up coming up open more often. Sure, there are high milking cows that breed back every year, but if we look at the average milk EPD in those open cows, it, it's the high milk cows that suffer. And it, where you particularly see it, John, as you look around in these young cows here, you know, these two-year-olds that are high milking, they get drawn down and they have a hard time rebreeding that second time. So what I caution people is try to figure out looking at the EPDs on your bulls, the level of milk that's optimal for your herd. And if that's not something you know, I would, I would visit with some local seed stock producers who are clued into that. Some of them will just be trying to produce maximum weaning weight, but those of us that are really paying attention know there's an optimal. We suggest for most of our kind of high western range ranch operations that you know give or take in the low 20s is where we want to be on milk you get down in the teens and and they won't raise the kind of real healthy fleshy thrifty calves that you'd like you get up into the 30s and boy those cows need a lot of groceries to keep bread back i guess if, they, if the cows don't maintain body condition through through the uh the the nursing period and then coming into the into gestation that uh that's going to be a, a problem with with breeding back well, and you bring up a good point, John. You know, it's, the, people think, well, it's just that time period while that cow's milking that she needs the higher requirement. But the studies actually show that a high milking cow needs more nutrition all year round because she's got a bigger liver and internal organs that fuel that milk production system. And those internal organs drive her, her feed intake and feed requirements. So a higher milking cow actually has higher nutritional requirements even when she's not lactating.